Nick Durant here with Tattoo University. Last week we talked about self-tattooing and how you can use that to improve your tattooing techniques. Now, what it, you didn't learn from last week is that the most important part of self-tattooing is seeing how the tattoo heals. This is why as an apprentice or as someone learning tattooing, you always want to tattoo yourself or somebody you know because you can look at your tattoos when they're healed. That's the most important part. And it doesn't look rough, it doesn't look scabby, there aren't little white patches everywhere. I'm gonna talk about something else in this video, but I really started doing this and I was gonna explain how to read a tattoo and how to look at a healed tattoo and see how you can make adjustments from that tattoo. So lately I've been trying to clear up some of the misconceptions that are out there about Tattoo University. And one of those misconceptions is that I feel like I know everything, and that's not the case. I learned things on my own, I was self-taught, and I've talked to other tattoo artists, I've worked with other tattoo artists through the internet, and talked to them over the phone, and I worked with some in the shop, and I picked up what I could from them, but for the most part I was self-taught. It was very hard for me to find information on the internet and in books that was helpful when I was trying to learn how to tattoo. And I wasn't allowed to get into shops until I learned how to tattoo. So I had to do that myself and I found out there was a lot of bad information out there. And what I'm trying to do is just give you my information. As I learned how to tattoo, I just kept records of things I learned and I kept track of things, took photographs, so I'm just sharing with you my experience as a tattoo artist. Really working on my realism and practicing shading techniques and with insects, you can get a lot of that. That's why I chose this moth. So whether you don't like me or you don't like my style and you don't like the way I tattoo, that's all okay. What you need to do is look at the facts and look at what I'm presenting to you. The way I'm working is that I'm presenting to you guys how I tattoo and things I've learned. Not to say that this is the best way that this should be done or this is the only way that this should be done. But if you've been apprentice and someone has told you over and over again that you can only do something one way then that's incorrect. Look at the way I'm doing it, maybe look at the way you're doing it and just take some mental notes. Even if you don't like what I'm doing, you can say, I see what he's doing and I see why that works for him, but I don't like that and I'm gonna do it this way. Even if you say that, you're still learning something from Tattoo University. You're still getting more confidence in your style and you think that this is the better way to do it, you're gonna do it that way, but you can still understand that somebody might be doing it differently. And if you run into another tattoo artist like that, maybe you'll understand that that works for them and what you're doing works for you. So I'm not trying to say that what everybody's doing out there is bad. I'm just trying to say that you guys should look into this, look into some of the facts I'm putting out there, maybe try it out, see if you like it or not, and then make a decision. And I don't care what decision you make, as long as you pick up on some more knowledge here. Sometimes tattoo artists just learn one thing and they stick to it, and they don't even know why they do it that way. They know the how, but they don't know the why. They know I tattoo like this and I have this liner machine, but why is that a liner machine? Why does the thinner ink work with that liner machine? Why do I move faster? You know, they don't know the reason why behind all of that. And that's what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to give you guys a little more knowledge into tattooing. And I want to share what I'm doing with everybody so I can get info back from you guys. And we can all work together and figure out some really good ways to improve our tattooing. That is what I'm trying to do. I'm not trying to do anything else. I'm not trying to be popular. I'm not trying to look fancy. I'm just trying to tattoo 
learn about tattooing, and share that information with everybody out there. Some of the improvements we have made since this channel started have been my stencil solution, Cosmic Green Stencil Gel, and this is a solution that I showed you guys how to make. It does not have deodorant in it, so it doesn't smell bad, and you can make this for very cheap, and it works very well. So we've made improvements on the body butter. We're using coconut oil and shea butter. We're not putting a lot of ingredients in here that we don't need. And we have a lot of this stuff. For around $10, I made a ton of this. I made this container and two other containers. So that has been an improvement that Tattoo University hopefully has taught you guys and maybe you guys are using it out there. I'm very interested in taking tattooing to the next level and I feel like right now we are working off a lot of old knowledge and we are using a lot of old techniques and old equipment that need to be improved upon. Technology is moving forward, we're learning new ways to tattoo and we're learning new ways to build tattoo equipment that's smaller, better, lighter and faster. Let me introduce something else that I've created since I've started Tattoo University and that is this design for this hand poker here. And this is actually 3D printed. So one of the things I've picked up on is 3D printing and I feel like 3D printing is going to change a lot of things not only with tattooing but I feel like it will change some of our tattooing machines and the equipment we use to tattoo with. And already, this design is something that I came up with. This is a hand poker that just allows you to attach this to the tube and it holds your needle in place. And with this design, you can hand poke easier or stick poke, whatever you want to call it. Your tip acts as an ink reservoir just like when you're using a regular machine and this will allow you to attach this to your tube and then you dip into your ink and then you have some ink to work with for a while before it runs out. And in this manner you can tattoo faster. And with hand poking that's important because it's not a machine it takes a little while. You have to do a lot of pokes just to run one little line. But if you had a machine, you could just run the line in a matter of seconds. With hand poking, it might take a couple of minutes to finish that one line. So it's important that you have the ink reservoir there for your needle so that you can do that. And I haven't seen anything 3D printed out there yet. And what they're doing now is just making like a half of a machine just like an armature bar with the vise and they're welded together but those cost a lot of money I'm gonna start making these and this isn't gonna cost a lot of money at all and I can print out a lot of these and make a lot of different intricate designs and because I know tattoo artists out there like to have cool equipment and this is the very basic hand poking tool, it does the job, but you can always add skulls and all kinds of dragons and cool things to this later on if that's what you're into. But if you just like simplicity, this would not cost you very much. And that's another improvement that we've made. So, so far that we can count just here on the table, there are three improvements that I've made to tattooing since I've started learning and I plan on continuing that and I plan on making a lot of improvements and I hope you guys are out there doing the same thing and if you guys have products like this and you have things that you want to show people that you think will improve their tattooing I want to share those with you. You share those with me and I'll share those with everybody who's following the channel because that's what the channel is about is making improvements and learning. The channel is not about how good of a tattoo artist I am. I'm making improvements and everybody even if you've been tattooing for 20 years I feel like you should still be trying to make improvements. Every time I tattoo I try to make an improvement on the next tattoo. I look at the heel tattoo make an improvement on the next one. Now I spent about two months 
mixing all kinds of stuff together, putting all kinds of crap on my skin until I came up with this solution. Now what I learned during that process is this. If you put the solution on the skin first, when you're shaving you can use this same solution as a shaving cream or shaving gel. You just put that on there and you shave with it. You know, let it stay a little goopy and then come through and shave with the gel. Now what this is doing is you are removing the hair by shaving but the gel has the alcohol in it already so you, you don't have to add the alcohol. When I was making this solution what I did was I put a stencil on and I, then I tried to wipe it off and it would come off but then I noticed the second stencil I put on was a little harder to come off and the more I let that alcohol and that solution sit on the skin the harder the tattoo stencil was to come off. So I use this for cleaning the area and then I use it for applying the stencil because either it's cleaning the area, removing all that oil so the stencil sticks better, or your skin, because the alcohol is actually an astringent, is tightening up and maybe that's giving it a better surface area for your stencil. I don't know exactly why it works better, I just know this works better. After cleaning the area with the solution, I'm going to apply a little more solution, just enough for the stencil. We don't want it sloppy wet, we just want a little bit, just moist. Enough to transfer the stencil. So just a little wet there. And we can apply a little pressure. Make sure all of that sticks to the skin. stencil but if you're worried about your stencil coming off and you're having stencil problems let this stencil sit on your skin for about 15 minutes and then start tattooing on it because actually the longer it kind of sits on here the harder it will be to come off for me it's not an issue really I can tattoo with the, the worst stencil solution because if I can see the line that means I can throw a little line in there just to, as a placeholder almost until I come back and shade it in. Now what I'm going to do with this is show you guys how, show you guys and girls how this works and I'm going to do a little shading with the hand poker because I really enjoy hand poking and I think it gets a bad rap. People say that it really hurts but when you do it this way, you actually, for myself, I can't even feel it. I hand poked this and I thought it was going to fall out because I didn't feel anything. And usually when you tattoo with the machine, you can feel it because it's hitting you a lot more. With this, you don't feel it as much, but the tattoos will actually heal up just like they go in. And they're nice and dark. And sometimes, you know, usually you wait two weeks and it scabs up with a hand poke tattoo sometimes you, you don't even notice the scab it's like it's just in there and the skin heals up there we go. okay so another thing I do is use triple black tattoo ink and notice this does not say lining ink so this is a thicker ink that works for me because I have a long stroke on all of my tattoo machines that's how I like to tattoo so because I use a triple black, I don't mix 
my gray wash the same way as some other people do. I do not use the system where it's a quarter, a half, three quarters, and full. I don't use that system because with the triple black that will not work. If you set this up using a quarter cup, the quarter cup system, you'll get black, 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 and black because this is super dark. So we take some witch hazel here So I do the full black for my solid lines, the half for lighter shading, and the couple of drops for my lightest shading. And then I do a cup of straight witch hazel. And what I do is I dip in that to clean out my tip when I'm using black and that will eventually pick up black and that will be my lightest shade of black. Again, just for repetition, just so you guys can see what I'm doing. Full cup of black. Less than half. A couple of drops. And straight witch hazel on that one. So I come by with the witch hazel, fill those up to the top. And that is how I mix my gray wash. I'm also going to do a little orange and yellow in this tattoo. So if you're going to do yellow, yellow doesn't tend to show up. But if you do a darker color behind the yellow, it will show up even more. So what I like to do is go with solid gold, which you can see is kind of a yellowish color but a little darker tint. I lay that down before I lay down my atomic yellow which is your bright yellow. And if we want to add a little orange to that we'll get crazy. Actually I think I'm going to go with a little muted earth. I'm going to go with a little brown too. This way you can go from a darker tone to a lighter tone. And if you want to go even lighter on your yellow, you could put some white out here, which I might do. Put a little white out here as well, if we want to go even brighter on that yellow. We're going to start off with a hand poker. I'm going to dip in my full black. You can see nothing's dripping out. Focus here, camera, focus. You can see nothing's dripping out, but there's some black ink in the tip. And as soon as I put it this direction and push on the skin, that will come out. Just like with your tattoo machine, you have this puddle on the skin, use it to your advantage. Okay, so it's actually going to be better if I start here. That way I don't wipe off my stencil while I'm working up here. So I just did that so I could show you the hand poker. Now I'm just going to go through and fill out the rest of this tattoo with hand poking and my tattoo machine.
You can see that this is a very dark image and these are very dark, these look like lines. So if I put darker lines in there, this is lighter right here, the dark will make that look lighter. And this being darker than this, it's going to give it some dimension there. And you can see my stencil is still here. I'm just trying not to wipe it very much. And if I saw an area that was probably fading away, I would just come in and I would do that area real quick so I don't lose that area. And I also have my reference right here. So I'm working off my stencil, but I'm also working off my reference. So if anybody wonders why I do a lot of these videos tattooing on myself. Go out and find somebody, try to set up a camera, and try to shoot a video while you're tattooing them, and it's just a whole lot of headache. This way, while I'm tattooing myself, I can stop whenever I want, I can talk whenever I want, I can move around, I know what I'm gonna do, so it's a lot easier. And usually it's just me tattooing on somebody, I don't have a camera crew here, so sometimes it's just easier to tattoo on myself and show you guys what I'm doing. You can see we get a nice dark line, but we want to fan that out. We don't want that solid black. I actually want this to be dark, and then we're going to make it lighter as it moves out. So I can go back in here and make these areas darker that I want and then I can use another needle and kind of fan it out so that it gets lighter. Okay, so this is a little bigger area. Let me finish outlining this wing and then I'll switch to my 7 mag. So that 7 laid that in really dark, but I want to fan this out and make it even lighter, so I'm going to move to my 11 mag.
So with the yellow, what we want to do <clears throat> I'm going to clean the area, you know, try to make sure we don't get any black ink into our yellow. And then I'm going to use the seven round mag because we want this yellow to go in solid. And with the seven round mag, it should do that pretty easy. So I'm gonna rinse my machine out. Pretty good here. This is the look we're going for here. There's yellow here, but there's a darker yellow. It's more of a gold color, this gold that we have. So I'm going to lay down a little gold first and then I'm going to lay down some yellow on top of it. I'm not going to wash my yellow out, or the gold out of the tip, I'm just going to dip it in yellow and keep going. Watch this. The yellow looks orange. And that's because right now there is a little bit of blood in with the yellow. Here's the rag. I'm going to do a clean area. Put it over this spot. And if you don't like the sight of blood, don't look at this, there's a little bit of blood. So, yellow and red makes orange. So that right now is not going to look really yellow. But when it heals, it will. The colors will come out. So I'm not going to mess with that anymore. I'm not going to come back and try to make this more yellow. I went over it once, I'm going to leave it alone. I know that color's in there. I got an orange color now, but once this heals and this scab falls out, it will be yellow and it will be a bright yellow with a gold undertone to it. So you'll get several layers there. You have your dark shadows and you have your gold, then your yellow. You need to be patient and just know not to mess with that. If you're doing things correctly, that will come out once it's healed and it'll be super bright. And as it heals, you'll start to see the yellow come out. And if you use a little darker yellow or a brown or a gold underneath, it will help that yellow look even brighter. Especially if you put it right next to a contrasting color, which so we have yellow right on top of black. So that's going to make that stand out a lot. You can see this is shaded in. I can go right on top of this with the yellow. And the yellow 
won't get rid of the black, but it'll actually mix a little bit with the black. Everything I've done, I have done with zero budget. And I've just done it with the equipment that I had. And I've built equipment, I've sold equipment, traded equipment with some of you guys. And I want to help you guys out. And I want to help the tattoo artists out there who might be struggling want to get into a shop or want to get their own studios but nobody's helping them out so with the internet and networking with other tattoo artists if you're doing the right things you should be able to find somebody who will help you out and these videos will get you pointed the right direction what this channel is about is about learning and helping others and improving tattooing techniques it's not about BSing each other. It's not about blowing smoke up your ass. It's not about pretending to be something I'm not. And I'll tell you right now, I am not the best tattoo artist. I am not even close. There's so many people who are better than me out there. But what I'm doing is improving myself, improving my artwork. And I'm networking with you guys to see if you guys have any ideas if you guys can help out or if I can help you out because we're all networking, we're all tattoo artists, there's no reason we should be screwing each other. We have taken this channel this far with what I had myself with zero budget. If you want to help the channel out and you've learned from the channel and you want to kind of pay it back and allow us to help other people out you can donate money to the channel, you can donate equipment I will show you ways to do that for free if you feel like paying that's up to you but I'm helping everybody out even the people who don't have money those people, if you want to help the channel out so I can help you out more, you can use things like Gokbox and, you know, watch some of the videos and things like that that will help the channel out because then the companies like YouTube will pay us for our videos which will allow me to get more tattooing equipment, to get more video equipment, and to do more that will help you guys out. You know, with tattooing, you can get away with a little bit of trickery if you know how to do it. By using contrasting colors, you can make things pop out. Black and yellow contrast. Sometimes, if you just put a little red line behind the tattoo, not even really noticeable, but see how the tattoo is a little red right now? People will look at that and think that that's a brand new tattoo, even when this tattoo is super old. I have this tattoo, my tattoo artist did it on me, and he put a little red behind it. I asked him, like, why'd you put the red? I didn't really ask for that red. And later on, I appreciated it because everybody to this day still thinks that that tattoo is a new tattoo. You could hide a little red behind things to make things stick out. You know, add a little blue to your white so you can see the white better. Add a little brown to your yellow so the yellow pops out. So all these little tricks to making your tattoo stand out a little bit better. You can see I'm not saturating the tattoo with white. 
I'm just putting where the lightest areas would be at. I'm adding a little bit of white or some of the areas that I want to stick out a little bit more. 